Okay, it's just so Trish, it is Saturday. So I have been wanting to make you a video oh, all week. It's been crazy. If you've been following me on Instagram, it's all about the baby goats. It is all about the baby goats. Um, yeah. So I'm about to go a little crazy. It must be shark week, if you know what I mean. My kids have been dragging things out and not putting it away. And I find when it's shark week, my tiny house feels so tiny absolutely tiny I didn't I was hoping to get the video made Thursday that didn't work out at all now it's Saturday and like my husband's driving me crazy because I don't know about you but so I try to make a video and my husband's favorite thing is to then be around he doesn't want to be in the video here let's make him in the video there he is so many years ago he doesn't want to be in the video but he wants to aggravate me and then he'll say things, then he'll be like, you can't put that in the video. Yeah, that's not going to work. Not at all. So anyways, I want to talk to you. I'm going to show you some goats. I'm going to show you what we're doing for reading. We really had like a huge like brain break or um, accomplishment in our reading that I want to share with you. And just, just some stuff how it's going with Cece. So, plus I'm going to tell you our library haul and what's in it and what we're reading and why we're reading it and how we're reading it and what to read about it in the goat yeah. pen what do we find we find baby rabbits baby rabbits Get that out of here. so we find we have some little baby rabbits so our in our goat in our little like one of our goat sheds Look, you can't even see they're there. So the kids found them today. So we're going to bury them back up. See this right here? This is obvious markings of some bunnies. We've had some bunnies before, so we'll just stick them right back there. Look, you can't even tell there's bunnies there. But that's a bunny nest. Okay, don't touch. You have to leave them alone. Baby, I want on. The playground isn't for either one of you. You or Padme. Yeah, we can do a photo off and take a picture and put him on the playground and take a picture. Or just put him on the playground. Let's show everybody how they play. They don't play. They hop around. Y'all need to do your pigs. There she goes. Play, play time was earlier this morning, darling. I'm videoing you. Everybody can see how bossy you are. Playtime was earlier this morning while you were in bed sleeping late. Yeah, that wasn't right. What you early. need to do is get up earlier <laughs> mm -hmm. instead of sleeping all day in bed. Yeah, that's what I do. So can you see, like, it's been crazy busy around here? Absolutely crazy busy. All right, so I have been doing the question by Lee Bortons um, with our Classical Conversations community. Look, I got a cool notebook. That's what I got. Anyways, um, as you know, or if you don't know, we did classical conversations this year, and we really had a rough start. Um, I really had a hard time confusing, like, modern education versus classical education and making that transfer. And when I was in still, without realizing it, like, I thought I was still in classical conversation mode. I was like, or classical education mode. But really, I was still dragging some modern education aspects to it. Making the conversion has been so much easier. So we are going through this book. A group of us ladies in our community are going through this book. And it's really been phenomenal. We're not going word by word. We literally read a chapter at a time. And when we read our chat or two chapters, actually, we'll get together. And we just kind of talk about what stood out to us. And we go around the table, what stood out to us, and then we all piggyback. And usually by the, like, the last three or four people, we're like, yeah, everything was covered we, that stood out to us. And then we'll do the next chapter. So this last chapter was about reading. All right, so it was about reading. And it really got me thinking, I have an abundant reader, which is Katie. She's always been an abundant reader. I've kind of wowed you with the things she read. And then I have a delayed reader who's a reluctant reader. Bubba, who was a delayed reader until he was third grade, and we kind of got it in third grade, and then he's been a reluctant reader since. He did go through the Diary of a Wimpy Kid, 
and he did read the ACE booklets really well. And he can read things, but he doesn't have a desire to sit with a book and read. And then Lottie's kind of a bit on the same token. Now, she learned to read first and second grade. Not a problem. And Addie learned to read first and second grade also. No big deals. But neither one of them is a very big, adamant reader. And as I'm going through the question, it talked about... And this is kind of where I'm going to sit down with one of my girlfriends. And I'm hoping I can get her on video. Because she also comes from a lot of time spent with the Robinson curriculum and then coming into classical conversations. And I'm like, we need to compare Art Robinson and Lee Borton's method styles and educational processes. And we've been talking about that. But one of the things I did during my really trying to attempt Art Robinson, and I hate to admit this, I got rid of all the illustrated classic books because they were fluff. And I got rid of a lot of fluff in my house because they weren't good enough. We need, you know, real meat and bones. Oh, I regret that so much. I can't even begin to tell you how much I regret getting rid of those books. Because at the time, they had enough pictures in them that my son would stay interested when I read them. And then I got rid of them all. And I think, like, the only one I got to read him was The Last of the Mohicans. Now, I could have read him the really heavy version... But it was too much. And I've been listening to a lot of Lee Bortons on the podcast. And then, you know, going through the book. And I'm realizing, you know, it's those lower levels that builds fluency. That, you know, makes it doable. So fighting the ADHD and the lack of fluency, my children don't want to start a book. Because for them, reading a book take, is a long time investment. And that ADHD kicks in. And, the, and I understand it. I have it. And it's just the aspect of how long will it take me to finish a book like this? That's a long time committed. That's overwhelming. I don't want to do it. So in reading the question and then sitting with everybody, it hit me. And I call them Nickelback books. Um, just from the days of trading the little paper books. In. And I'm like, I need something quick and consumable as fast as possible. And I need it under the reading level so that... I can have them feel accomplished and finish the book. So I hit actually two libraries. They now have a system here in Florida, like my one library card that didn't get me anywhere now gets me to like all the counties, like seven or eight counties worth of libraries. So I'm like, whoa. So um, I went there and I talked to librarians and I spent some time with librarians and I just said, here's my plan. I have a seventh grader. I'm looking for a fifth grade reading level. He's not into fantasy, but it has to be fiction. And I want it to be something he can consume very quickly. And I said the same thing for my daughter who's in fifth. I want it around a fourth and third grade. And then my third grade daughter, I want around a second and first. And so some of these I know the reading level. Some of these I don't. And so let me just show you what I got. So I'm going to take you through, per kid what I picked out for them and what they picked out for themselves. Now, my plan is a very kind of classical style. It's a buffet. It's an absolute buffet that I'm hoping he'll find something here. Um, I don't know. Some of them when I got home, I was like, yeah, but whatever. So we got Henry Winkler over um, Ghost Buddies. I'm not really big into Super Perinalia, so I don't know if we'll do it. This one ended up being fantastic. I survived the Revolutionary War. So he really likes reading history and facts. This had a good play. He consumed this in like two hours. I, one of the things we ran into is that he has so much stamina and then he kind of starts dropping stamina. But this was a great read. I'm going to go grab more I Survived books. I grabbed also The Extreme Adventure. He hasn't started in on that one yet. I did pull up a land to remember, but I don't think he's ready for that. I could, We have read this out loud, but my, I think my daughter will end up reading this one in all reality. Um, I tried to grab Robots. I thought, um, this is the House of Robots. I thought he'd really get into it. It is kind of a graphic, it's not a graphic novel, but it's, you know, I don't know how, what you'd call that. But he read the first two chapters, and then he glazed through the book. He's like, no. I, he goes, I'm going to already tell you what happened. So I'm like, okay. Um, potty Mouth and Stupid. Stupid. I don't know how you want to say it, because it's not supposed to be stupid. But, um... He hasn't really picked up on that. And then because he liked the I Survive, I grabbed the Secret Mission. 
I think I'd have to read this to him. He is not going to get into it. But he read one out of my pile. That's awesome. All right, you're going to notice there's a theme here with his books. Um, Game, Night, and Versus Herobrine. I don't know if he's read this one. Or, no, he hasn't started this one yet. Um, Minecraft. Minecraft. I think he read this one already. He already read this one. So he doesn't have a hard time. He does get a little bit exhausted from reading the long end. He'll come and he'll be like, will you read the next chapter for me? So he's in it, but he's a little bit exhausted. Um, are you are you seeing a trend here? Yeah. Minecraft. He literally checked out nothing about Minecraft. I'm not going to get upset about it. I don't care. He's reading. Um, I like the fact that somebody has taken the time to write more than just a how-to book, but actually have written storylines that go with it. So he's read these, or he's read that one. He's working on this one. Um, and see no pictures, no graphic novels. And I'm glad it's something that piques his interest, so I'm not going to be that worried. You know, it's Minecraft. It's good. And so I just kind of give him my smaller, shorter, quicker books to kind of get that fluency. And then with him not having to be fully invested in the interest and then stuff he is interested in, he can get fully invested. I know, a long video, get your coffee. Lots of kids, lots of books. So Lottie is the next one. Lottie is 10 years old. She can read well. She's just not that interested to get into it. So I'm not sure how we ended up with the Dork Diaries. But I did grab a Dork Diary to see if she would get into it. I grabbed her a Judy B. Jones. I think this one is really a third grade reading level. So it might actually belong with um, Addie. One of the things I have is that I think a lot of Addies and Lotties could interchange just a little bit. But then she grabbed Earl the Squirrel. And so I read Earl the Squirrel to them already. Um, Rain of rain and so this is actually about a dog and she's so into her dogs right now i thought this would be a great little book um i'm not you know again this isn't one of the ones i typically pick out but librarians like this goes out a lot so i don't know encyclopedia brown i kind of was between her and bubba on this one but whatever we'll see it's a buffet so we'll see what they like but she has gone through fudgemania so she's almost done with fudgemania and those are kind of between her and I picked out. I didn't get such a huge amount because again, a lot of this can go with Addie. So let me grab Addie's and show you. Okay, so Addie's, a lot of like little Judy B. Jones. Um, there's a few Nancy Clancy's in here. Just some really quick read chapter books. Um, I did grab Geronimo Stilton. Stilton. Um, I'm hoping this will be something that picks up with all of them. Dory, Phantom, Matt. A lot of girl power ones. I'm not going to lie. A lot of little girl power type ones. Amelia Bedelia. Another Geronimo. Zoe. Sassafras. Frankly, Franny um, has been a really fun little one. But I found that she glazes over quite a few words. And this one, the one library tells you like the reading level. The other one doesn't. But the vocabulary, she's missing some vocabulary. So I'm hoping she'll read it and then want to reread it. But she she I think she loved this one. She got this one. She read it. Um, this is, they call it like reading level two to three. She really had an enjoyable time with this book. And then this one was pretty funny. She enjoyed this one. This one's a quick read. In fact, she was up at night in the bathroom reading this one. Those were her little books. Orville and Leona, I got actually books for them. So, you know, they love Mo Williams. So, of course, they had to go get some Mo Williams. They have been sneaking some Captain Underpants on Netflix. And I went ahead and got the Captain Underpants. And I've enjoyed the fact that it's building their stamina for listening. So, there's a lot of pictures in it. It's a graphic novel again. But um, it's been really good to get them to sit down and listen to the book and they've really enjoyed it and I think it has a lot to do with watching it on Netflix and then watching it then reading the books here I also got them a big Nate I'm not sure I think I even got this one I got this one for Bubba this is another one I got for Bubba because big Nate 
in the Pierce the librarian told me then moves into young adults and I got them the diary of the wimpy kid was what I picked out for them now my um, daughter Katie, you know, who's a voracious reader, she does not care about whatever the reading level is. She just reads. So, of course, there's The Land Remembered. She just finished this one. She loves this one. She feels like it's very much close to, um, oh, I can't remember the kids, um, The Baudelaire's. So, um, that's on Netflix, but we read the series. She likes this one better because it has geography and something else. I can't remember what she said. Then she picked up, I don't pick out any of her books. The Hope Chest, the Blue Fairy Book. This one's a cool one because I've come close to printing this book. This is an 1898 book from the year 1898, and they actually have the books in there. It's like a $25 book. So I'm glad I don't have to print it, and I'm glad I don't have to buy it. So she's picked out that one. And then she picked out um, Belle's Journey and Osprey's Take to Flight. And this one's more of a picture book. But see what I mean? Like, she's just across the board. Okay, so I then want to talk. So that's my library picks for this week. Um, I'm just excited that they're consuming. I'm trying to do a sticker chart and based on what they do in their chores and their work and then rewarding them with something special. But I've had a hard time sitting down and coming up with what those terms are to get a sticker. But I tell them every time they do a book, they get a sticker. And I think Bubba asked, like, this is such a big book, don't I get two? And I'm kind of like, you know what, I'm going to give you two because whatever it takes to move you into that mode, awesome. But we're beginning this book, The Fallacy Detective, with our challenge um, this week coming up. And it's funny because we only do certain lessons. There's 36 lessons in here, and we're only doing a few of the lessons. We're not doing a bunch. I think we're maybe 20. No, it can't be 20. Yeah, maybe 20 of the 36 lessons in here. But we have found this to be a really fun read aloud. And it's all about detecting like logical ways of people avoiding answering a question. You know, are you getting good counsel? And being able to um, kind of really understand arguments that are happening. So we've been reading this. I have to say I recommend this as an awesome um, read aloud. Oh, and this has been good. Oh, I also picked up from the library, Freddy Goes to Florida. So this looks like a very old book, but it's only, um, I think it's not even 10 years old. Oh, it's 98, so it's maybe 20. Um, but I thought this would be a fun read aloud. And then I picked up this one, and I couldn't help it. So it's Vinny Vitti Vidisi. And so it's just um, fun Latin songs, games, puzzles, and jokes. And my kids were like, oh, that's going to be so fun to kind of play with as we're doing our Latin. So there's a little bit of our CC in there. But I'm finding that this is working. I'm um, bringing the fluff back in. In fact, I'm going to post a video at the end of here where I talked about getting rid of fluff. So you can see, like, what a huge transformation it has been. And I have to say, it's like thanks to the question. And it's funny because talking to some ferocious readers that are in our community and they're like, I grew up on Judy B. Jones. I grew up on Goosebumps. I grew up on reading those books over and over again quickly and fast. They're like, in fact, I mean, those are some great little, not that they're building brain, but they're really having the fact of becoming that fluent, enjoying the read. So I'm trying to put some more hammocks outside to give them places to hide away to and spend that time reading just to help encourage that go. So if you have any suggestions, how are you doing? How is this for you? Have you fought that fluff? Um, what, did, what does Charlotte Mason call it? Twaddle? Twaddle? Yeah, talking about twaddle. Anyways, catch that next video. I know this has been a long one. I hope you fast played it. I tried to talk fast. Got your coffee and laundry done. You know, the things we do to get through long videos. But I really appreciate you. I know it's been a crazy week. I'll try to kind of still get in some more videos. We have a wedding to go to today. So, all right, we'll talk to you later. Love y'all. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. We can do this.